A very good morning once again. I'm glad you're still with us here on Morning at 10 TV. If you're just joining us from wherever you are watching across the country, the region and indeed the world, many thanks for choosing Morning at 10 TV. We're not only a breakfast show, but your companion on a daily basis, Monday to Friday. We are now at the Kickstarter <coughs> stage where we are discussing how tourism can be and must be a driver for economic growth. The value chain with regard to Uganda, but most importantly, what it should take for sector players and other stakeholders to invest in Uganda's tourism. I have with me uh, two gentlemen who will be helping us understand what is going on, but that's after our pre -abo. Tourism is a fast-growing sector, supported by the fact that Uganda is ranked as a top tourism destination and one of only three countries with about 50 percent of the world's known population of endangered mountain gorillas which ranked Uganda among the top 16 holiday destinations according to the Lonely Planet 2012 and the CNN 2016 survey. Furthermore, the steady growth in as far as tourist numbers are concerned and this is estimated to reach 1.5 million per year, a contribution of 7 0.7% to gross domestic product. I'm joined by the State Minister for Tourism, Martin Mugara Bahinduka, as well as Habat Biaruhanga, the President of the Uganda Tourism Association. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. A very good morning. Let me begin with uh, the Honorable Minister. Mm. An overview of what the tourism industry is right now from the point of view of the government and uh, perhaps the overseer of all the interventions. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Chris, and uh, good morning, uh, our viewers out there. Good morning to my president in the private sector as well. Okay. I think you have given a good uh, preamble mm. of what the sector means. Uh, if just in a nutshell, even before we come to Uganda, we looked at it globally. Mm. If I used the year 2022, the last time I checked, the tourism sector globally, if you look at the entire world economy, which was around 95 uh, trillion US dollars, mm. the tourism sector contributed around 7.5 trillion, mm. accounting for almost 8% of the entire global economy. So is Uganda, like you've said, the years we've been averaging. Say for COVID, where we had the challenges, but we've been averaging 8% to 10%. Mm. Uh, and that is just for our contribution to the GDP. But if you look for the employment levels as well, mm. we've been uh, averaging around 10%. Yeah. So, so definitely tourism is a big sector in this country. And, and uh, as government, as the ministry, with support from the private sector, is to see how more we can contribute to Uganda's uh, growth mm. as, as, as a sector. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, uh, if you look at 2022, and, and we are just still recovering, because if you look at... Uh, our pre-COVID figures were we over $1.5 billion. Mm. We closed 2022 mm. at around $760 something million, dollars, which, uh, which would say around 2.8 trillion mm. uh, Uganda shillings, which, which is a, quite a, a contribution to, mm. to Uganda's GDP. Yeah. 2023 went up to a billion dollars. So you can imagine if we are contributing around 3.7 trillion Uganda shillings to the entire GDP of this country, how much impact that has mm. on, the, on, the, on the country as a sector, okay. who we employ 1.5 million uh, uh, people in the value chain, both direct and direct, the hotel owners, the people giving services, it represents the, mm. the, the transport sector. So, so in a nutshell, it is big. Mm. It, it, it is a big sector. And, and I want to agree with your opening statement. Mm. And uh, if you look at uh, government's planning now, they are focused uh, on tourism as one of the sectors that is going to transform Uganda into a middle income <coughs> status. Mm. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we are going to see more investment in the sector. It has been improving over the years. I'm not saying it is the best, mm. but at least we see some uh, improvement. And also our figures are, are, are growing uh, going forward. Our visitations mm. to the parks have improved. We've surpassed 20. 19 pre-COVID levels, uh, our visitations to work, our visitation to most of the tourist sites, and we've also seen Ugandans now traveling. Mm. So, so, so yeah, it's a sector that can transform, and we are coming up. We have policies in place mm. uh, uh, that can uh, see us uh, where we see ourselves. If you look at our 20 vision 2040, uh, our contribution to to from tourism to GDP probably 
would go to around 12 billion dollars. Th mm. That's what uh, we envisage. That's what government is looking at. And with the right interventions, I believe we can get there. So yeah, it's a, it's a key sector. Okay. Uh, that is uh, a very good dose of optimism, especially when you speak about the right interventions. Shortly, I would love you to go to take us through the specifics of the strategies that are in place. You speak about the 20, uh, was it 20, 20 what? The strategy that is being undertaken? For, for 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 the for tourism sector, yes. Well, well, I can speak to to the sector in a nutshell because um, when you're looking at tourism, you look at uh, so many other sectors mm. encompassing tourism, uh, and and I am happy because now you look at th there are mainly three main travelers would look at if, mm. if if i would start from that direction without looking at the domestic uh, travelers, people travel for various reasons. Uh, maybe business, people travel for leisure, mm. people travel for conferences. Then now you can talk about the education, the medical, where we don't have much expertise compared to other countries. Mm. But, but and, and all of them make a certain kind of contribution to, 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 to our GDP and to the, to the uh, value chain, mm. right from the bottom to the top. So, so now, if, if we say that uh, 2023, we had 1.2 million non-Ugandans coming into this country. Mm. Their expenditure has changed. Before 2019, the average expenditure for a tourist in Uganda. Uh, and and uh, by the way, let's first define who a tourist is. A tourist is an individual who moves from uh, his normal place of abode mm. to another place and spends more than uh, 24 hours. Whether in Uganda, if you move mm. from Kampala and you go to Masaka and you for, spend uh, and you spend uh, more than 24 hours mm. you're now qualified as a tourist you're touring it Masaka it and Barara. yes it doesn't matter the, re the, whatever, the reason whatever reason you yes. yeah. so, so, so if you're looking at 1.2 million people mm. coming into the country bringing in foreign revenue and and the average expenditure has changed now from 1,000 to around 50 dollars Per, per visitation to around 1,055 mm. $1, dollars per visitation and someone is staying uh, the, the average stay has also now increased to around 10 11 days mm. so you can imagine how much money is and how much uh, impact it has in the sector okay. from whoever is selling food from the taxes we collect from the people who own the bars from i mean everyone mm. so 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 that's what I was saying. Uh, w when we look at the strategy, it, it now goes beyond the uh, only we in the tourism sector. What kind Ooh. of security are we giving? Mm. For instance, the, the challenges we had in Brazil. <coughs> and that's why when we are seated in cabinet and, and we're having these discussions, we support all the other sectors. Mm. I, if you don't directly give me money, and for instance, uh, like what is happening now, I know there is a contractor. They have mm. gotten the financial to work on the Karenga or Rome. Uh, Kidepo Road, around mm. 115 kilometers, which is a key tourism road. The same financial is going to work on the Bwende Mugahinga sector, where we make the biggest uh, revenues. Mm. And, and uh, so if that infrastructure is, is, is improved, and there is easy access to most of these resources we are talking about in the national parks, then that makes sense for us. So, so it's a cross-cutting sector. Okay. If you're giving Uganda Airlines, uh, and that is why We've had this discussion before. When, when Ugandans are attacking Uganda Airlines like a problem, the, our numbers are growing because now Uga, Uganda Airlines has a direct route to <laughs> some are, of these destinations. They are not despite attacking. They're the, asking for greater yes, uh, accountability. Dis, despite the challenge, there is no single airline in this region that is making a profit. Mm. Actually, if you look globally, the most of them, of the business, yeah. it is the nature of the business. Mm. But nevertheless, government continues investing in these sectors because, like, uh, like we say, it they is... Are the, support. I, I, so the uh, support structure to others. Yes, it is the mm. only route now in the air, just like a road oh. from here to, <laughs> to Kisoro, th that would help. So all, right. so all this, uh, and like I was talking about uh, uh, security, mm. the nature of uh, uh, um, the, the internet connection that we have, mm. the electricity that we're offering, the, the water. So, so it is a cross-cutting uh, sector. So, right. so, so, so beyond us as tourism, mm. when we talk about now we have a brand, Explore Uganda, the Pearl of Africa, the, 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 the marketing that we are doing out, out there, of course we don't have all the resources to market adequately as much we want, as we want in the, in, the, in the outside countries, but we are trying our best. But like I'm saying, if we are supported with these others, the airlines and the rest, and, and the rest it still helps us. If you look at um, 
our aggressive promotion of the domestic uh, tourism mm. component, encouraging Ugandans to travel so that we can improve the resilience okay. of the sector. Honorable, and, 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 I'm, and, yeah, and, I'm and afraid I'm going to have to cut you to halt you in your tracks there because uh, the marketing uh, imperative is one that uh, should be tackled extensively on its own. But allow me just uh, be able to capture the overview from uh, the president of uh, the Uganda Tourism Association. The Honorable Minister has virtually uh, given us what is an eye view, a bird's eye view of uh, the tourism sector right now. But it's heavy on uh, numbers, projections and uh, statistics. As president of the Uganda Tourism Association, can we get the picture that moves us away from the numbers at least for now, because I know the minister would love to project the <laughs> the numbers more than anything else. What's happening there? Yeah, he's <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, of course, the minister is very right. Uh, mm. We have to, when we're talking about tourism, we have to look at um, the future of it, where we are going. That's right. And uh, we have to look at uh, the really constituting the positive side. Mm. Um, <clears throat> the it's true the tourism sector feeds into all these other sectors mm. and creates um, employment for people direct, indirect, and induced. Mm. Um, in fact, the figures of employment would be much bigger than um, what the minister has just mentioned. The business is flowing, uh, but of course, the numbers which we get now at the moment, um, I can tell you it's a steady growth, coming, considering what you have gone through with COVID um, and other things that you see after COVID, we had Ebola, uh -huh. we had uh, <coughs> the killings of the people, and uh, so the, 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 the we are not yet well positioned in the real, real business like our neighbors. Mm. It's, it's good that uh, uh, the, 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 the president actually pronounced himself recently, giving us a targeted number of five million tourists coming to the country, which mm. I think is very good for us. But what we need to do is to put more effort in being visible in the right source markets of the tourists that spend money. We need to get people who spend money here. Uh, who can um, help us grow the economy because while well, I'd love to see many more Ugandans traveling but our spending culture is still very low mm. we're not very high spenders and uh, the investment of locals is still not yet really appreciated to the grade we think that the country is moving very well mm. uh, meaning that we have to concentrate on uh, it attracting more people because the, when the president says we need to target on 5 million tourists, which will definitely translate into maybe uh, $10 billion or even more. It requires a lot of effort. In, uh, I'm happy that the minister has actually made it clear that the, the roads in Kisora are going to be worked on, Karenga is going to be worked on, which has been a big concern for us. And um, th then we concentrate on uh, uh, human resource, development because uh, we cannot uh, tourism is, is a business of people mm. so if you don't have people in it who are qualified then you end up making uh, messes so there is the, the, the concentration is going to be on the on the marketing to make sure that you are present in the source markets tourist source markets mm. of our priority okay. and then continue to develop more products that you can that can give us a comparative advantage over um, other competitors in the region mm -hmm. or globally that um, we have right content mm -hmm. that people can be able to um, be, be appreciated and is appealing to quite a lot of uh, people from different source markets. We have um, efforts going to focus on the religious tourism in this country. Um, we're already working with the PSFU, mm -hmm. uh, the ministry and other players to bring more numbers um, for matters trail as a new product on the market. There are efforts to do the cultural heritage tourism beside the matters trail to make sure that we get more numbers because the, 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 the behavior of the cultural uh, heritage tourism globally 
um, fetches much higher than, than the wildlife okay. tourism, which we are selling. That's right. So when we do that, we get more people staying more days in the country. Uh -huh. And that's where we need to put a lot of energy to make sure that we really come out to compete with others. Because wildlife, where we are growing our numbers, we cannot compare with countries like Namibia, like South uh -huh. Africa, even our neighbor Tanzania. Uh -huh. So we have to position ourselves, you know, uniquely, that we are quite unique in our making. But also, um, considering the fact that Uganda has, has already identified, you know, as a part of Africa, that brand alone puts yeah. us in a position whereby everybody sh should come to Uganda. But we must justify mm. how how are we the power okay. in the source markets so that we are able to to. But also we have to increase to advise government now that Mr. Zia mm. to increase on our bilaterals with the government in source markets mm. because one advisory of uh, a, a negative advisory to come to Uganda like. Recently, last week, there was a, somebody who was flying to Uganda and he reached at the United States airport and he stopped there because the, the advisory said, don't go to Western Uganda. It's not safe. And it is safe. So how shall we change that? So the bilaterals must be much stronger, but the embassies who operate from here should speak the truth and uh, tell the truth, <laughs> they tell what is on the ground. Because yeah. they live here. Okay. They are peacefully moving around here. Mm. They are representative of their countries. They should mm. tell the truth that, by the way, what you saw, talked about was the last year. Mm. So we should go beyond that. Mm. But also, um, you see, we have to know how to play international politics. Mm. That sometimes certain things we don't have to, much as we may be strong on certain issues, we just have to play it internally, not creating uh, international wars with us because i remember last year i was entering usa and uh, somebody asked me where are you coming from i said uganda uganda is not safe i said why they kill people you know so somewhere we have to concentrate on that one also to make sure that it is actually the people it is safe yeah. in fact in fact there should be a two of the embassies mm -hmm. ambassadors eh? ambassadors with our president with all of us take them around the country take them around the country and show the world so that the country is safe People can move around. All right. Mr. Yes. Biruhanga, you've just provided uh, mm. the minister with information that he would ideally perhaps uh, take a lot more time to receive from you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Taking ambassadors and uh, many of these other officials around the country would be a good idea. But that is down to a case of uh, uncoordinated troop movements when it comes to the communication strategy on the part of government, whether it be it on the international scene or even here. Because many times, just as the nation is experiencing some good events happening, the euphoria, a minister or two come up with a statement that completely throws us off balance. I think it should be more coordinated uh, communication on the part of government. If you don't mind, Honorable, uh, the thrust on marketing is huge. Marketing brand Uganda as a nation. If you don't mind, could we go into the specifics of it? How and what are you focusing on right now? Away from uh, saying Ugandans must not be seen to downplay efforts by government, it's natural for people to want to look at that which they think is important to them, whether government thinks this should be coming first or the other one should be coming later. People are people. They will react to anything. But if the message is clear from the government, then it can shape the narrative of reactions from the population. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, even before I respond to that, uh, you see, when you asked me, I had focused on government strategy. Mm. And we hadn't uh, really looked at the importance of the private sector that okay. it represents in the tourism sector. Mm. It is uh, actually 50 50. Oh, almost. Yeah. Because um, if you look at, we can't discuss tourism without the infrastructure by mm -hmm. the private sector, leave alone what government puts in place. Mm. The various hotels. We have around, uh, if you look by 2019, around 370 something bids. Mm. in this country. I, I don't want to discuss the standard. Some are good for us, the domestic travelers, mm. but for the high-end travelers, we've been short on, on, on accommodation facilities. Mm. I'm happy now we have good hotels. I think we have uh, someone doing a Hilton. We have someone doing a Marriott here. Mm. And the president has given a, a, a good exemptions. The, the government policy is clear and poor to invest in, uh, in accommodation. We are giving concessions in parks. We put, put up uh, 
high-end accommodation, but also, of course, also provide for for, for the mid-range and, and for the budget uh, uh, traveler. So, so, so the private sector comes in really handy in us achieving uh, all these things that, that we are discussing. And I want to thank them for... for, for for doing a good job, but also to encourage more Ugandans mm. to invest. It's a profitable business. You'll make some money here and there. Uh, and also, like you said, the, the deliberate development of sites now beyond the, the colonial uh, wildlife safari kind of tourism. Mm. We are developing a number of sites. Recently, we were in Western Uganda with the committee, the Chitagata Hot Springs, the, the Mugaba Palace, the, the museum in... in, 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 uh, in uh, the Karamoja area, mm. the wildlife, uh, we are going to develop uh, four satellite wildlife centers. Well, a number of infrastructure just to supplement, because if you're talking about marketing and growth of these numbers, you also need the products in place mm. and well developed products. And I want to thank government for supporting us there, and probably the support will increase so that we can have as many so that when someone comes here, he is spoiled for choice because mm. we have the products, all we need is just to improve them and improve the accessibility to them. <coughs> Now, on, 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 on the issue of marketing and communication, mm. and I want to tell you, you see, Uganda is the only unique country in the region, in Africa, and I would say in the whole world in terms of communication. How and is that? I, and, and I don't know, I want to attribute that to the government I sit in mm. for deliberate freedom of expression. It is not anywhere else, in, in, in even in the region. Uganda is the only country where everyone is an authority. Everyone will communicate the way they wish to communicate, and there is no reprimand whatsoever. Let me tell you, there are more killings in neighboring countries than there are in Uganda. The level of insecurity, I don't want to say the countries. If you look at the U.S. alone, the level of, you cannot compare the U.S. to Uganda in terms of insecurity. I mean, how many people are killed there daily? But how do they choose to communicate and share this information is, is, is a different matter. And, and that is where I keep saying that for us, Uganda here, the liberty we have to share and communicate, and the lack of patriotism in the Ugandans. And now, and this is what I keep saying, the sector is employing 1.5 million people. You say you want uh, more roads, contributing 8% to GDP, bringing in trillions of shillings. Mm. What, uh, what would be the impact of someone sharing? Be because we have differences in uh, political affiliation. Someone is red, I'm yellow, and he says, you know what, I don't care, he puts on a suit organizes a bunch of uh, people in the diaspora and he just goes to tell them how terrible Uganda is and he flies back into this country. So, but those are the people we're encouraging to come. Those are the people that are supposed to spend these revenues. But someone uh, now thinks uh, just for his interest beyond the interest of the entire country and that is where the problem is and that's what we keep telling Ugandans. Yes, social media is good, but if you went and tweeted about as much as Uganda, <coughs> the government will try, yes, deliberately to communicate mm. what is right. Uh, and of course, we are going to try. We've been having discussions with ICT. Please put out as much good information as possible, but we also want the Ugandans to help us here. And that's why we encourage also domestic tourism, that we should have a lot of positive feed on most of the platforms that speaks good to Uganda, just to counter the negative. Mm. So, so, so it is also an issue of, uh, I think there should be some constraint from the Ugandans on what you communicate. Your careless com oh, and even on things that are not factual, that you're not sure of, because whatever you put out there affects tourism is the most fragile sector in the world. I it, is, uh, it doesn't work around noise. Mm. You raise noise about it, you can kill it in a day, just in a day. So, so, but, but I want to thank the Ugandans that are communicating good, that keeps, uh, still keep uh, talking positive. So, so yes, indeed, uh, as a country, we'll continue communicating. As a sector, we, 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 we are in discussion with finance to give us a, a, a more budget for marketing Uganda. Now we have, uh, I think, a better engagement, and we're going to continue with the private sector. I, I, those, those ones are internal, we'll discuss on how we strategize together to market destination Uganda as mm -hmm. a team, not only as ministry, so we share these ideas and see. Uh, and and uh, hopefully finance will give us that support so that once you market, then you'll have the numbers yeah, coming into, numbers into the country. Okay. But I think the most important thing that we've not had over the years has been the brand. You see, mm -hmm. when you're marketing and you don't have a clear message out there, is a problem. That's also now we have a brand, we're developing the products. The, Uganda is safe, and I, I think the, what is 
is left is how the Ugandan also choose to communicate about this country. All right. In that state, domestic tourism uh, holds so much potential. If you don't mind, uh, Mr. Biruhanga, when it comes to the number of Ugandans who are visiting national parks and uh, many of these tourist centers and attractions to experience the Uganda, <coughs> the brand Uganda, uh, some of the factors that hold them back are self-inflicted by our own agencies, uh, it could be some other stakeholders. There tends to be what I can describe as soft discrimination, you know, and uh, many Ugandans are quick to notice that there is that uh, soft discrimination where a certain a hotel, for example, or a lodge uh, in a certain place has sections where Ugandans are directly told that no 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 that is not your uh, yours to uh, to uh, access even when they have the ability to cough out uh, that money for that f particular facility how are those sentiments being ad uh, addressed you know <coughs> the, the, i know it's a tough one the but the topic of marketing we're going to have to talk is about much it. bigger mm -hmm. and requires a lot of time mm -hmm. and when you add in domestic uh -huh. it becomes more complex <laughs> because travel is a culture. Yeah. Mm. It's a culture that has to be built, mm -hmm. adopted by the locals. Spending is another culture. Mm. But also having disposable income is another factor that you must consider when you're marketing. Those are already three factors. Yes, you must consider those. Those are huge factors. Yeah. Because how many people in Uganda travel? Who are those who can travel? Now, look, bring in investment. You're attracting an investor. He brings here $5 million, $10 million, builds a facility, and you want somebody to go there and complain and say, I want to sleep for 50000 70000 because it doesn't have disposable income. Mm. It doesn't, there are no jobs in the country. People don't have money. So the spending, they can't spend what they don't have. Mm. You'd start from, for example, civil servants. How many civil servants can afford to travel alone? Mm -hmm. Even government itself, when does government give out a vehicle and say we have got a holiday for our staff? Every, every Uganda should travel within the country. So you have to look at all those factors together to be able to talk about what you've just mentioned. Because if I have put my hotels $10 million, you're not going to give me conditions that because you are Ugandan, me, I want profit. Mm. I've left, brought my money from somewhere else. I've invested in your country. I want profit. That's right. So we need to increase investment, including domestic investment. The government has to come up with a deliberate policy on in domestic indigenous investment. Mm. So when there's a problem, you can actually even say, okay, can we negotiate for seasonal rates? Mm. If we negotiate for seasonal rates, then people can understand. Okay. Okay, they're able to uh, you know, come up with those rates. Even talking to the way a government has facilities, has services like Uganda Wildlife Authority, like all these cultural sites, you should have some rates for the Ugandans, mm. not all uniform. When it becomes uniform, when you have invested, invited people to come and invest, it becomes a big challenge. Mm. So, but getting back to the bigger picture of marketing, mm. we really, now the president has said we need to get five million tourists in the next five years. That what should relate with how much do you invest in marketing. Mm -hmm. I give you an example. Kenya, our neighbor here, they just finished the golf tournament. Mm, the magical, the magical yeah. something. Kenya. They invested three million dollars to that only that the government through the Kenya Tourism Board. Mm. They invested in the money, they brought a lot of equipment, they brought so many people flying in with their personal jets. Mm. And you know, they, they, they spent a lot of money there. But what happens, even the Kenya Airways brought its, its biggest plane. Mm. It was flying over the, 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 golf, course, the golf course, just yeah. close, because it was being viewed by 480 million people around the world. Mm. So we need to do such a things that can put Uganda in, in, in the market put Uganda in the position to be seen as a destination. There are things we should come out with. We are so blessed that we have got so many products that happen within a short time mm. alone. Wildlife, mixing wildlife and culture, even golf, that's why actually uh, tourism now, private sector is moving to golf. We are having conversations with golf, I think in the next three, four, five days, we are going to team it together to make sure that we come up with a big thing. Mm. Like we can bring big golfers here, the, 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 the Tiger Woods, of the type to come to this country. So we need to look at the bigger picture. Mm. And I can tell you that we have got so many things in this country that 
give us comparative advantage over our neighbors. That's right. Because our neighbors, some of our neighbors have got one segment, one segment, but for us we have it all mm -hmm. in one country. Now it's a question of coming up with a uh, very nice policy, marketing, uh, marketing strategy, mm. marketing strategy that okay. see the private sector involved mm. in the marketing. We need to get. I was talking to my friends yesterday that if we can have maybe one to two hundred two operators out of this country every year to go to source markets, I can tell they cannot come back empty-handed. The minister has heard that. Let's go for a break. <laughs> when we return, we shall be asking the minister where is the will because at the end of the day, the numbers can be good to toss around, especially when it comes to projections and stuff like that. But an operator, one who is buried in the uh, thick of it all, has just <coughs> spoken about issues that uh, government ought to uh, put a lot of attention to. The fact that Uganda is endowed with just about everything else that all the other countries around us have in segmented versions, then that is an advantage that we should be able to uh, leverage on. Stay with us, we'll be right back. At a discussion here in studio where, of course, I'm talking to the uh, State Minister for Tourism, uh, Mr. Mugara, as well as the President of uh, the Uganda Tourism Association, Herbert Biaruhanga. We are talking tourism and how it can be the driver that it needs to be for economic growth. There are so many multifaceted interventions that are happening within the industry, but at the fear of some of them becoming movements that are uncoordinated, especially for the, uh, ad, if I were to use the adage of uh, uncoordinated troop movements. But we've been told there's a lot that is going on. The strategies in place. Allow me ask the minister. The budget framework paper is up and discussions are ongoing. The stakeholders, including Mr. Viruhanga, are looking out for how much money <laughs> Mr. Kasaija is putting onto the tourism industry. Talk is one thing when uh, the government talks about how important the industry is, how it's going to be the driver of economic growth, how revenues are coming in uh, and uh, we are ramping into that. But then the budget is read and either there has been no significant increment or increase in funding, it defeats the purpose and the conversation becomes a little bit blurred. Mm. Well, I agree. I, I am now just looking at the the underscore very mm -hmm. well. Can tourism be a driver? D tourism is actually, even as we speak, a driver. <laughs> it's, uh, it's already <laughs> easier, sure, no doubt. Home economy, may, yeah. Maybe its contribution uh, yeah. and how it Can contributes it more mm -hmm. going forward. No, no, we, and, and uh, for us, we want to thank uh, government. W where we sit, we know um, the resource envelope and how much competing interest we have. And, and uh, lucky enough, like I said, tourism cuts across all sectors. If, if, if uh, Defense is given a uh, good support uh, and it gives us the security, if infrastructure, mm. if uh, uh, ICT is doing the communication. So yeah, I in a nutshell, uh, uh, there has been some improvement. Of course, uh, if I was to jealously speak for my sector, I'd say we need much more, but uh, it, it is a reserve of finance and on the basis of the resource that we have. <coughs> also, of course, on how much more revenue we are collecting, especially as, as NTR mm. in, in, in the sector. And we have had discussions of raising the over ceilings, and so so these are discussions we are having now. Mm. Uh, we are still talking with finance. We have an invitation to make another presentation. I, I think they have even invited the private sector, and we believe that uh, yeah, th there will be some other improvement. But uh, so far, we still want to thank them for the support, especially His Excellency the President. Mm. And and you can see that finance has put tourism as one of the strategic uh, sectors that will transform. Uh, Uganda's economy uh, and the president has supported us over the years he's bringing in investors to do airports mm -hmm. and, and uh, I think this is one of the reasons uh, arguments we're having development of infrastructure he has something uh, in Kidepo now uh, an investor putting up an airport he has talked to so many people to do the Arua airport sorry to expand most of these aerodromes and improve mm -hmm. them he's, he's, uh, he's even the roads that I'm talking about have been on the basis of his directives he has given us botanical garden to improve work He's supporting as, as, as much as, but he can only go to the extent where the resource envelope uh, uh, can push or propel uh, him to. So, but generally, I am at least uh, uh, happy mm. that there's been uh, some focus on the sector. And indeed, mm. like uh, uh, Biaranga says, that uh, marketing is one of the things that we are going to go out of the way and focus more on now that we are developing the products. 
and and I am happy that uh, uh, when the most of these uh, agencies were being created now like uh, let's say the uh, the Uganda Tourism Board mm. that is in charge of marketing uh, destination Uganda that they also have a board that is full of the private sector where his people are and and I believe uh, previously the likes of uh, Honorable Mgireko now we have uh, other people much more young energy the Roni Kazovas the Tony Mulindes, a group of people that now will sit on that board, share ideas. So, so the private sector within the government structure in the tourism sector as is, is well <coughs> uh, And hopefully we can uh, count on the expertise and knowledge to better the sector together as a team. Okay. Mr. Beirhanga, does that offer you confidence, especially with regard to the areas that you require uh, budgetary uh, support for? Yeah, my, my position on this point is that the government should really listen. Mm. You cannot say you want five billion, five billion tour, five million tourists, mm. and you're injecting two hundred billion shillings. You expect to get one tri ten trillion, mm. but on two hundred billion, no. How much? The government should put minimum two trillion in marketing. Minimum annually, annually, and then you see how money comes in. How you see how agriculture because the more lodges you have, mm. the, the more marketing you do, the more investors you have. That's right, the more investors you have in various subsectors of the economy. You're going to see people in agriculture, you're going to see people in mining, you're going to see people in all areas. And you, we feed, like I said, we feed in mm. into all these sectors. So, put in more money because we need good investors, we need domestic investment, put in money, we are not visible. Mm. We cannot compete with other people. Mm. They only keep, keep telling us Uganda is a good source market, Uganda is the number one source market, then we become happy, we are source market for this, but just, just <laughs> lying us. For them, they are pushing ahead, they are in the digital marketing, they are mm. everywhere, their visibility is everywhere. The investors are coming from all walks of life to come to their countries, mm. but for us we are being, so me, I think the government should put more money there. Mm. And then, if you're putting money into this marketing and, and product development, mm. which products we have to single out? For yeah. example, we've just had, let me speak to my side, we've just had a fantastic conference, which has never happened in the whole world, the Women Brothers Conference. Yeah. It has put us on the, on the map. Which conference is that? It was called International Conference for Women Brothers. For Women Brothers. We had about, we had all the continents here, mm. and the minister attended. People coming to watch but Yes, they were everywhere here. Yeah. We, have, we had the best. Okay. The best even the meeting I had last night was about it. Mm. Now, they have actually called it to go to Costa Rica. Mm. Now, if you say we are going to market this product, put in money in those products. I would love to see the budget framework paper saying we are putting 20 million, 20 billion in, I mean 10 billion in, 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 in culture, we are putting 2 billion in bird watching, 5 billion in butterflies, so that we can have a reason to mm. be in the market. Help me understand, because the lay person out there, many times when they hear conversations like this, they end on, we want money to do this, put money here. Now, you've just talked about, talked about butterflies, and I was like, butterflies? How is how is this how is that supposed to happen? Now we, I am bringing you the private we, sector. We create a forest that I don't know. Just no, you, paint that picture you, for you us. You develop the product. Okay. You make sure mm -hmm. you develop the content for it. Looking at the species, you do research on it. Mm. How do you compete with other countries in South America? Okay. Understand the market properly. Do market intelligence mm. and train people to be able to offer the services. Uh, train lodges on how to create. Habitats Habitat for the butterflies so butterflies. that people can always be at their lodges and enjoy taking photographs because you know any oh. photographer in the world would want to come and do photography of the yeah. butterflies. Okay. You know, how many species do you have in the country? We could be having like 2,000 species of butterflies mm -hmm. competing with other countries. We could talk about reptiles. Mm -hmm. We are well positioned with reptiles. Mm -hmm. We are selling reptile tours now. We started talking about it 10 years ago. Now we have about five companies now selling reptile tours, but it's not developed. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives us a comparative advantage over other destinations. We are there. We're talking about 1,100 species of birds in the country. Yes. 1,000. Yes, 100 species of birds mm -hmm. in, the, in the country, sharing more than half of the African continent. Our neighbors cannot compete with us because why do they have the accessibility to the ocean? Mm -hmm. For us, we are internal. We are uh, landlocked mm -hmm. and we have lots of forests, meaning that our competitor is South America. Only in the market because of the because of the forest the Amazon. Area. yes Congo would be our potential competitor but mm. you know we share a big chunk of species coming from Congo into some mm. so we, we are well positioned but we need to put money where we think can make a difference and be able to market otherwise it could be a blanket statement yes 
we are going to 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 give 200 billion Minister. and then it ends up in salaries it ends up in <laughs> allowances it ends up in and but we uh, don't get the real business and so more but from the private sector point of view okay. let's put money where it is supposed to be and then we work with government okay. because you know government cannot give private sector cash mm. and it should be understood clearly mm. some people think government is going to hand over money to you know mm -hmm. we are saying Put the money in the ministry, put their two trillion. Okay. And then we agree with them. No, let's market in, in Canada, South America, as we develop domestic tourism. I'm glad you speak about the fact that uh, people's expectations could be skewed, especially with regard to receiving money uh, from the government. But there must be some kind of initiative that allows for private investors to be cushioned in case they need to do investments in tourism. Has that conversation come up? within a cabinet to be able to have a fund uh, for investors in tourism who might want to set up uh, spaces or uh, uh, attractions <coughs> that could make us money but don't have that specific amount of money or capital that is required. Yes, well, uh, w there are a number of interventions. Mm. Uh, I think especially after COVID, we had, uh, I think we have a fund that has uh, um, some good money coupled by the government of Uganda. Mm and and uh, and uh, the european union in udb uh, mm. a, a fund helping people out of recovery i think it's around 62 billion and uganda contributed around uh, 40 40 something billion the, the, the government anyway but but in a nutshell as well the number of tax incentives uh, on on the number of people in the sector like i was telling you if you're building a hotel you have waivers in the kitchen where uh, some of the equipment that you use you'll get uh, tax waivers on it if you're buying a a two operator, if you're two operator registered and you want to buy a van for transportation, mm. you, the ones you see with red number plates, most of them have uh, tax exemptions. We're having discussions with a number of investors. If you're good enough, mm. you can still build a lodge in the park. We give you a concession mm. uh, uh, on top of the of the tax waivers. But in 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 a nutshell, if if uh, and I'm happy he was talking about the budding, uh, and that's why we are saying how important the tourism sector is going forward. Mm. Because when you're talking tourism, you're talking conservation. You're now talking the forests. Yeah. You'll not talk about the wildlife without discussing conservation. You're talking about uh, 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 um, the gender inclusiveness. You're talking about the women in the sector. They are the ones making the crafts. Mm -hmm. They are the ones. So they also directly benefit. It, it, it cuts across. It's only a sector where you're only looking at who is uh, better than the other in terms of competition. Maybe mm -hmm. the man alone. So, so in a nutshell, it is it is a, 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 a cross-cutting uh, uh, sector uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. And and uh, in conclusion, really, for me, I will still say that. And uh, we started with it. The interest of some of the people that we have here, the, this one I will say without fear of favor, because we have interaction and we've told it to them in their faces. Mm. The unhonesty of some of our partners we have in the country, the Europeans, the, and I see so many people running to them thinking that, but most of them do not have good agenda for us. Their strategy is actually to collapse us. And it is unfortunate when the Ugandans now join them and make their work much easier. But we have embassies in this country, we have uh, those are gra those are grave allegations you're making, Honourable Minister. No, I mean them, and I can defend them. And I have said that in front of them because we the know what happens behind the scenes. We have people in this country, but but if if people are putting their a, agenda is to collapse us. If people are putting a travel communications that are not on the basis of fact that okay. people should not come to this country because mm. we signed the law for instance, mm. that is against their interest. But advisory is uh, part and parcel of the modus operandi for any government to advise for people who might be traveling to America <coughs> in <coughs> case of safety for their own citizens. <coughs> so <coughs> should put an advisor not <coughs> to go to US. <coughs> Uganda has the, can also say, well, no. since there's been a killing in Iowa or Alabama, no, 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 uh, please, no, Ugandans, don't go there. No, 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 no but <laughs> Mr. Higini, I, I, I think it is on the okay. table, yeah. and even here in NTV, it is everywhere, mm. that because of the bill that protects the interest and the culture and the behavior of the Ugandan community mm. that was signed in Parliament, mm. there's a lot of fight against this country and in any direction. Of course, trying to put us in a corner, if you don't do this, if you don't repeal the law, then we are going this mm. direction. And we are all being victims of this. I think this is unfair. Very unfair. My only problem is when the Ugandan also now jump on them to support mm. and we get into a bigger problem. So, 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 it is unfortunate, but my encouragement to the Ugandans, please, let's talk mm. good about this beautiful country. As a ministry, 
We are going to continue doing our best. We'll continue discussing with the government, and I see the commitment there to improve the sector so we can bring in more revenue, employ more Ugandans. We are investing a lot of money in terms of human resource, which has been one of the biggest challenges. Mm. When you're talking about when some Ugandans got some of the of the hotels, even in Kampala here, mm. if you go to some, uh, I usually use an example, if you go to some of the restaurants and this one is a Ugandan restaurant and the next one is Japanese in the same location, mm. sometimes you'll get a better service at the Japanese restaurant. The, the, the issue is the attitude and the kind of human resource we are putting in the tourism sector. Tourism is a service sector. Mm. How your demeanor when you're serving me, when you welcome me into, into a restaurant or a bar, how you have a discussion and the smile is very key. It, mm. so, some people think, take it for granted, but we want to government, we, we have an institute in UHTTI, Government has invested over 40 billion Uganda shillings right. in making that institute better. We are building a, a good application hotel there. We've changed the management. We have more competent people. And we believe we put out the right human resource. But the, 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 the most important thing is we have to talk about the good of the country. Right. Whoever wants to come into this country wants to experience what they can't experience out there. And oh, we can only there. communicate that positively, yeah. not negatively. And of course, uh, tourism is uh, heavily hinged on uh, experiences. Yeah. The fact that you can go back wherever you've uh, come from and you can talk about how this was extraordinary as uh, something you experienced for the very first time. I would love to allow you gentlemen to wrap this up. Uh, the aspect of uh, mice, this is uh, meetings, incentives and uh, conferences and exhibitions, is is pretty heavy, especially when it comes to <coughs> African uh, countries' uh, next uh, target in as far as uh, bringing on board numbers is concerned. Are you on board as private sector? Yes, we are. Uh, actually, we are putting a lot of efforts now mm. to rebuild it, and the government came into space of mice about six years ago, mm. and now we see we have got a convention bureau. Okay. Uh, set up already at UTB. I think eventually it's going to be an independent um, um, agency. Agency, which mm. is actually supposed to be at the private sector. We are we we are putting up. Uh, we have set up a mice committee mm. uh, to oversee the development of mice in the country. There is an association in place, which is also uh, rebuilding itself. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Uganda uh, Association of Conferences and Incentives. So we are trying to make sure that we be in space and make sure we build our capacities, training our people, having proper legislation, mm -hmm. having a strategy for mice for the specific that area, you know, certification and standards, put them in place. Okay. That's why we're putting up a mice committee mm -hmm. and it's going to have quite a number of experts from the from the country, golf, uh, sports, you have people who do rallies, all mm -hmm. these initiatives bring a lot of a lot of crowd to mm -hmm. the people and we are in that place. Uh, but also I wanted to mention that uh, we are, because of that fact, we are changing the name of the association. We are, we are actually in the final stages. Ah, it's becoming a confederation, a confederation of Uganda Tourism of Associations. Uganda Tourism Associations. Yes, we passed it in our AGM and we're just in the final stages. Mm -hmm. Probably next month we'll be launching it. Mm -hmm. So it becomes more encompassing, bring many people together that's on right. board. And that's why we're having even the investment committee would be set up to work with government. We have a quality assurance committee mm -hmm. to work with Uganda Tourism Board and make sure that, you know, the quality of services from the private sector mm -hmm. um, are in tandem with the law and also the Minister of Education, um, especially the, the, the DIT and UBTEB working together. Uh, we are working with PSFU very, very much because uh, as our apex body is helping us to get through all these things, we want to make sure that Ugandans go out to market their country. That's right. But the right people. Okay. We will definitely engage more the, the, the ministry at the ministry level <coughs> to make sure we get the right people, we get criteria in place. Mm. Because now if the government is giving in a conducive climate for doing business, we have to help also government and say, look, this is very good, but let's do it like this. Let's do it like And this. then we work together. And I think that kind of arrangement will help us to move better. All right, Honorable Minister, and uh, how about uh, your hunger president of the Uganda Tourism Association, many thanks. I think it's in order for us to congratulate him in advance as the first president of the confederation or aren't you going to stand no, do you guys have elections or we have elections soon after after the launch after the, we have the election all right but let's allow the minister to yes, have to, a last to, to word to conclude yeah uh, mine is first of all uh, you, you concluded by say talking about mice mice yeah uh, uganda is ranked six among the uh, best uh, mice destinations uh, 
Africa. in Africa. Oh, yes. Okay. Even before we had the I facilities the world. like no, 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 in Africa. <laughs> but of course, we are competing with the South Africa, mm. uh, uh, um, Egypt, those those high, uh, highly developed countries. Mm. But without the facilities, I want to congratulate government, the president, on. Uh, hosting NAM, mm. G77. This, is right. this, this has been one of the biggest things that has happened to this country in so many years. Mm. And I believe this is going to improve on our ranking in the MICE uh, 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 component I in Africa and globally. Maybe we'll move among the top five now. Mm. But also the infrastructure that it came with. I if you move around Kampala now, the roads are better, they are paved, they are putting trees all over. Mm. We have a conference center uh, in Munyonyo. As government, we have land. We are discussing with investors to have another conference center built in Entebbe. Mm. And, and uh, so, so, so the, the mentality that Ugandans had then that government is doing this because of now for the visitors, not for the Ugandans. <laughs> now the visitors left so many. Uh, it's now a month plus. <laughs> the Ugandans are here. We are the ones enjoy enjoying it. the roads, <laughs> the trees. So, so, so I, 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 that's what I'm saying. In a nutshell, Ugandans should look at should this country as theirs. It mm. is good. It is beautiful. Oh, okay. Let's carry on the gospel. All right. Honorable Martin Mugara, Bahinduka State Minister for Tourism, and uh, Habat uh, Biorhanga, President of the uh, Uganda Tourism Association. Many thanks for emboldening our understanding of what's going on in the industry, but most importantly, uh, continuing to offer hope and uh, optimism that things will get better for us to achieve the kind of economic growth that the nation needs. That will do it for the Kickstarter discussion, but do stay with us.